Hey everybody, this is Eric with The Dramatic. Thanks for coming and hanging out with us for another episode of The Backbeat. I've got my friend in a long overdue conversation here, Drew Harper, all the way from British Columbia, Canada. How are you doing, man? I'm good. I'm good. How are you doing? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. So like I said, this is overdue. We talked a little bit about that before we started recording. Um, we've been following each other on YouTube for, I mean, at least a couple of years. It's been a while. I th- yeah, I think at least a year and a half, two years, maybe. Uh, pretty close to the beginning of my start when it comes to drum drumming on YouTube. So, yeah, yeah I, I remember some of the first videos I, I saw of yours. You were, I want to say, either in a garage or a basement. But I was just so impressed with like the way you had done it and the lighting and the the mix you were getting, too, was, was so cool. So what was that space? What was that? that you were in yeah yeah so i was i had just gotten back home from uh college it's my last year of college i was uh moving home with my parents and they had just moved into a new to them house and that was the basement it was unfinished and there was this shiny stuff all over the walls and i was like if i can bounce some cool color light off of that it should look pretty pretty awesome on camera so I got a lot of comments about what is that stuff on the wall, man? It looks great. All that kind of stuff. And I'm going, it's just this weird, like insulation stuff on in my basement. So it worked out well. It did. I remember it looking like, cause you did have it lit with the colored lights. It looked really, really neat. That's funny that it was like, I don't know. It's just what's here, but I made it work for me. (laughs) That's Mm -hmm. so cool. That's so cool. Um, Where did you go to college? Uh, so I came, so, uh, we were talking about this a little bit before. So I was living in Ontario with my family, came out to British Columbia for, for college. I went to Columbia Bible college, um, studying, um, uh, doing biblical studies, um, uh, did a diploma. And then when I, uh, came back home was when I started up, uh, drumming on YouTube. I did have a YouTube channel before just kind of learning how to make videos, but finally was able to start my dream of drumming on on youtube so that's awesome and then now you you so you went to college in british columbia from ontario and now you're back in british columbia right full time correct yes so we moved i moved out here so i met my now wife at bible college and then moved home and then we got engaged and then i moved out here so that we could get married and start a life together. So now I'm here. Awesome. It's been, Oh, I guess we're getting close to two years now out here. So I guess we would have followed each other for at least two years then. So yeah. Cause it was the old space, yeah. right? So it's a minimum of two, yeah. right? That's yeah, awesome. Sure. That's awesome. Well, tell me a little bit about how you got started playing drums. Why the drums are not like, I don't know, the trombone or something. <laughs> Yeah, it's funny that you say that. I think the first instrument maybe I touched was not the trombone, but the trumpet. Oh, really? Um, Well, I'm sure I touched the guitar before. My dad plays guitar a little bit, but um, I don't know. There was, um, I think my family was trying to figure out um, what my siblings and I might want to do music wise. We all love music in my family. so they had bought my older brother a drum kit for Christmas because he was doing percussion in like concert band. So nice. like, sweet, let's, let's try him out on, on the drums. And it was also, it wasn't just for him, but it was kind of like a family thing. Like whoever wants to sit down on it can sit down on it and start playing. And my older brother, he uh, had the habit of saying, I want to play this instrument and then never playing it once it showed up in the house. So uh, the start of that was the drums. He, he wanted to play the drums and he, he enjoyed it when he played at school, but it never got used by him. And I decided to sit down and start playing. And I, I think I had been learning on my own for at least a year, maybe two years I maybe started at like 11 years old. Um, I'm 24 now. 
um, yeah, I <laughs> just sat down after my brother just neglected it and kind of claimed it as my own. And it just seemed to one be just super fun and interesting to learn. And two, I could just get my energy out a little bit. So <laughs> right. Yeah, it's a good, it's a good uh therapeutic uh event to sit down and play yeah. and get some of that out. It, it can be good or bad for me. Like sometimes it's just getting out some like pent up, like not not full on anger, but just like just frustration and kind of getting some of that out. And then it's fun when you feel good too. To say, you know, yeah. to sit down and and play. It's awesome. Well, that's so cool that, that he had neglected it. And you're like, I'll do it. I think that looks pretty yeah. awesome. That's great. Mm -hmm. And and so, you, so you've been playing since you were 11. I started when I was 12. Um, and uh, I, I, I think when I started watching you, like even in that amount of time of you playing, I don't think I was that good back at that stage stage in my playing and uh so mm. like you play with you play like you've been playing you, you know your entire life you know like 40 mm. years or something you have such a great style <laughs> and a great approach i've always enjoyed listening to you play and then you do a lot of a lot of like um how to's and a lot of informative stuff uh too so how do you decide whether you're going to do like drum cover stuff or whether you're going to do some of this more informative gear stuff yeah um i originally when so as i was learning the drums i think i started taking drum lessons at like 12 or 13 years old so i had practiced on my own for a couple of years and then i started ta taking lessons at that time i actually discovered one of my favorite youtube drummers like ever and he was playing my favorite song at the time um you probably know i'm sure people who are watching probably know who he is uh Quibus pakither yeah or cob or cobus as we all end up saying because we don't know how to speak south african so right so we go phonetically right right <laughs> yes um yeah he he popped up he was playing the song fireflies by owl city and at the time i just loved that song and from that moment on i'm like i'm learning this instrument this guy's just enjoying the instrument and has made this video for other people to enjoy and i was like one day i'm gonna do that i'm gonna play my favorite songs and i'm gonna show other people that i'm having a blast and they're gonna maybe enjoy it as well so i think the dream overall was like i want to play drums on youtube and some of it was like as i was getting older and learning about youtube i was going okay i learned that you could you could potentially make money off of youtube I'm like okay that would be a cool thing to do whilst following my my dream of playing drums how do i do that and i learned like just covering your favorite songs won't make that money so i'm like okay how do i also make other videos that might potentially make some money uh not Clearly, it's not my main goal, obviously, but might as well have the chance to do it if I if I get there. Uh, right. So some of those like how to videos came about, and but I I kind of also like started looking at it as if I were to be starting YouTube again, uh, what would I want to know from that YouTube drummer? There's, I always felt that like the genre of drumming on youtube is like a very unclear how do i do it and how do i do it well so it's like i'm gonna see if i can teach people things that maybe i made the mistake of doing and or things that i found out were a, a good way to start and beneficial so i think it was like i want to do the dreaming part but i also want to help people maybe follow their dream too that's awesome. Kind of take what you've learned and give it, give it back. I think that's part of what we're supposed to do as people. Yeah. Like is invest into other, into other people's life. That's a life well lived. So you, you just mentioned it. You just talked about dreaming big and I see your um, the little wood, wood thing there behind you that says dream big. And you say that in a lot in, in, well, all of the videos that I'm thinking of at least 
That's kind of your mm-hmm. your tagline, for lack of a better word. What does that mean to yeah. you? Yeah, yeah. I just thought, like, I feel like we've all grown up with the idea of that, like, being an artist or a musician is like a pipe dream, and it's probably never going to happen. You can't really either do it as a career or do it like on the side and and be kind of successful or enjoy it while it's, like doing this thing so it's just kind of a dream and I I've always thought that like it doesn't matter what it is but like having the dreams that are like like beyond your reach are so kind of important I think to like potentially achieving the smaller portions of those goals and those dreams is like being willing to say like I want to do this. This is what I would love to do, but it's like well beyond your reach at like this moment. And it might not be in the future, but like being able to have a huge dream to shoot for might bring you to places you've never thought you've been. And I think it's important for people to enjoy the process of dreaming that big dream. Yeah, That's awesome, dude. I totally agree. I totally agree. And it commits you to the process like of getting from a to the big dream, you know, um, Mm -hmm. and all the work that it takes to get there. I think a lot of times in our culture, as we see um, everybody wants the big dream, they want the destination, but they don't want to put in all this work that comes with it. But I like the way you phrase it Mm -hmm. because it's, it's a commitment to doing all the work and enjoying the journey to get, to get to, to get to that. And um, I think that's where Mm -hmm. so much of the fun is, is in the learning. Oh yeah. That's probably my favorite thing about one drumming and then two drumming and learning how to do it on YouTube. It's all of the different learning. How do I get better at this part? How do I get better at that part? How do I be good at playing the drums to a click track or to a song? How do I get better at then recording that? How do I get better at making the video? And it's just so cool to, it's so much fun to, to learn. I was never a good, I didn't love school, but I love to learn. So like they, school was hard, but learning is so much fun when it's things that you're so interested about and passionate about. So I love the process of learning those interesting things to me. Yeah. Agreed. Agreed. It's so much easier to like really apply yourself when it's something that you're interested in um, and to take it all in. Absolutely. And I always, I always said to my son, I used to talk about this a lot that, that like, I think those dreams that we have in us, the, the, those goals, those um, passions and those abilities, like God put those in there. So they're not just there like floating around by accident. We're meant to do something Mm -hmm. with them. We're meant to pursue those. And, and, um, I kind of hear that like in the subtext of what you're saying is, yeah, these are here pursue these things. I love, I yeah, exactly. love that. And I think we've become mm-hmm. kind of become afraid to dream big just a, a, as a general rule, because we're afraid to fail. Um, yeah. How, do you, do you ever deal with that? Like the fear of what if this doesn't work out or. Um, I think like the hope is that it does work out. The dream is that it works out, but in the long run, it's like, I'm going to have a backlog of like all of the different processes and steps and how I learned how to do so many different things. I get to see how I've started and then ended up. And even if other people don't like it and other people don't want to follow along, I enjoyed the process and I, and it just gets me, especially now as an adult, it gets me more of an excuse to go and play the drums and enjoy music where life can be busy with work and stuff, but it at least gets me going like, okay, I'm going to go learn this song and I'm going to go play and record it. And on that day, I might not have wanted to drive and go visit my drum kit and sit down and play where I actually did at that point. So I think it's just been, if it doesn't work out, if I fail, um, I still enjoyed it and I'll probably still keep doing it even if I'm failing at it. So that's the, that's the attitude. I think that's it. Like that's how you don't become afraid of 
because you're enjoying the step, each step along the way. And there's going to be some misfires and there's going to be some things that land really well. And you just keep learning and moving, moving forward. I love, I love that. That's good stuff, man. When you're preparing for a cover, what does that, what does that process look like for you? How do you approach it? Um, I know early on when I was trying to really do it for the views, try to get the subscribers, it was all about, um, oh, well, I first started with, I just got to play a song that I like. And then it was like, okay, I got to do the views stuff and get subscribers. So it was like, pick a song that either just recently came out and it's like a popular song and try to learn that or um, what has been a popular song recently. So that was like, figure out what song I'm going to play. Um, right now I'm kind of going back into the, I love this song at this moment and I'm going to play that song because I love it. Um, still thinking about the, the popular songs too because that helps the process but um yeah figure out what the song is i'm gonna play uh, does it have drums in it or does it not and am i adding new parts or old parts like i'm writing completely from scratch or am i just playing what's being played there so and then i go and kind of i set it up in my DAW. I use GarageBand, surprisingly enough. A lot of people use like Logic or something like that, but I'm just using a free DAW to record my audio. So I set it up in there, set up the click track uh, so that it kind of follows along and kind of guides me through the song. And then usually I just kind of sit down and play it. I don't really write too much out. I just sit down and see what I want to do, kind of listen to it and see... Um, oh, there could be a cool fill here that would be like emphasized. And then, yeah, I played a few times and then I hit record and then I record it over and over until I feel like I've not messed it up <laughs> or at <laughs> least the at least the mistakes that are in there. I'm like, sure, I made a mistake there, but the rest of it was really, really good. Um, or I'm running out of battery and I kind of just need to wrap it up. So this it's the, really it's just, this it's do or die now we were out of battery <laughs> yeah so i kind of just sit down and play it a bunch and then feel it out and over time over the like three four five six seven eight ten takes that i do i finally settle into what i want to play so it's not a huge science or anything it's just know the song figure out what's going on in the song and then what can i add and make it a little bit better and show off what i can do so nice nice well it, yeah like it, you said nothing scientific but it's everybody's approach can be a little bit different so it's neat to hear and and i think that it's a it's good to keep it simple like that right mm -hmm. no, what is where is my playing ability how can i take that make what's already here my own you know and make it entertaining to listen mm -hmm. to maybe somebody else coming up in the learning process behind me can learn something from what, you know, from what I'm, I'm doing here. Um, I tend to listen to yeah. something like an inordinate amount of times before I even <laughs> set, set down on the drum kit. So it's kind of floating around mm -hmm. in my head that it just, for me, that it just becomes an issue of like working out the mechanics of it, you know, physically. Um, yeah. But yeah, I get that. I, I tried doing a couple tunes, where I was like, Ooh, let's ride the lightning. That is this song, you know? And, uh, and I always, for me, I always get disappointed. I'm like, I'm just going to keep doing whatever I want to do. <laughs> like that's more, more fun. Mm -hmm. You know, How, what have you had varying degrees of success with that? Or has it always kind of hit home for you? I know that like, sometimes when I sit down, I I've definitely sat down to, I wanted to make a drum cover. Um, I've sat down and I've played it for, I've done a bunch of takes beforehand and then I've hit record um, and I've done a whole bunch of takes and then I'm just like, not happy. I'm like, I, I didn't, I was not successful. It was like too many mistakes. I I'd listen back to it and go like, nah, this is just doesn't line up. And I've definitely like stopped said, okay, today wasn't the day. Uh, I'll have to 
come back to it again. I've I put in the work at least today to learn the song and it, it seems to be a little harder than I, I thought it would be. Um, I'll come back to it next week and try it again. And there's also been songs that I've, I said, I'm going to cover this song. And um, I tried it. I worked on it for like an hour or two hours and I just couldn't, couldn't do it. And I've just said, Nope, I guess I'm not, I'm not playing that song. And I mean, maybe one day I'll come back to it and figure it out again. But yeah, there's been a few times, most of the time it's been like, I'm okay. I figured it out and then I'll be, I'll be good with it. And there's been like one or two times that I've come back home and like sat down and been working on it and gone, I think I can do better. So I'll try it again, but that doesn't often happen. And same with the, like, I wasn't successful on the recording day. I'm going to just quit and come back to it. That's maybe happened once or twice. So most of the time I'm successful with it. Nice. Nice. Who were some of your early influences? Oh, I think like most drummers, uh, Neil Peart was big influence of like, at the time I'm going, man, this is the best drummer I've ever ever seen in my entire life and still he stacks up and uh love i remember the one of the first songs as a 13 year old i tr- i brought to my drum teacher and said i want to learn this song was uh rush's uh tom sawyer okay and that is such a feat to try to learn like even thinking about it now trying to play it is such a hard song to play um and I learned it part for part um, with my drum teacher at 13. Nice. Was I great at it? I don't know. At 13, I thought I was amazing. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I think Neil Pert was one of the the big ones. Um, I mentioned Quibus, uh, big influence at the time, uh, at least YouTube wise. Um, and then um a few years later i kind of fell into um the dave matthews band so carter beauford the drummer for dave matthews band kind of was a big influence and then just my drum teacher um he had a local he has a local band in ontario and i thought it was so awesome to hear the music that he was making with his band and then play it with him and then get to influence like be influenced by him and whatnot so his name's thomas perquin and his his band is ivory hours so if you guys want to check it out go check it out they write some like indie pop it's like still all music like musical instrument based not like most pop music but yeah a lot of cool stuff and i was able to like help him on some of his demos because he enjoyed working, not only teaching me, but learning from me at the time. So it was kind of, kind of cool. So those are kind of my drumming influences. That's awesome. Yeah. Neil, Neil gets, Neil is a, most drummers. I was, anytime anybody asks me, I'm like uh, a bunch of people that nobody's ever heard of. (laughs) Yeah. Because I grew up listening to a lot of like eighties CCM music. So what okay, was yeah. in- influencing me was very different than what was influencing other people my age, you know, at that time. Mm-hmm. Um, it wasn't until I went to college that I was like, what? <laughs> There's all this music out here. And uh, and then started to hear other, you know, other drummers that kind of started to be influenced and continue to be influenced by some of them uh, today. Mm-hmm. So that's really cool. I've never... Um, I've never even tried to sit down and learn a Rush song. I like, I hear it and I'm like, holy crap. I don't have time for that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> which, which maybe is lazy, is lazy on my part. Um, but so kudos, kudos to, to you for breaking down Tom Sawyer and learning it uh, part part by part. That's amazing. What are, what are you playing? What kit are you playing on? I am playing a sonar. What was it? AQ2 or SQ2? I can never remember. One's the more expensive one, and then the other one's like still high end, and but like in the 
mid to high level of instruments. Yeah, it's the uh, Sonar AQ2. Um, it's in the Fusion sizes, which is, uh, I got two rack toms and a floor tom, uh, 10 by 7, 12 by 8, and then 16 by 15, I think. It's kind of an odd depth. And okay. then like 22, 22 by 14 and a half or something like that. Okay. So another odd depth. And then I've got the snare drum that matches that, which is a 14 by six. And then I've also got a little Mapex, like 10 inch snare drum. Uh, yeah. I like to, to test some stuff out with that. And then one of the snares that I've been enjoying the most is actually a snare that I got for free when I was in college. It's a, uh, it's a, uh, a steel, uh, pearl export snare drum, which is, I think it's a 14 by either six and a half or seven. So it's kind of deep, which I really enjoy. And I got it tuned pretty low in college. I actually took that snare drum and I remember seeing a video from R David R. Uh, he was hand hammering a steel snare drum. So I was like, oh, I wow. got this snare drum for, I got this snare drum for free. So I'm going to do the same thing. So that's what I did. And that's the snare drum that I love playing for that like big fat snare sound for like worship or I don't know, some country tunes and stuff. So nice. That's cool. Yeah, our David R does some, some awesome stuff. It's crazy. Yeah. It's crazy. And a super nice guy. He actually I reached out to him and with some quite like woodworking questions. And then okay, he was yeah. and he was like, Hey man, yeah, any time. And I was like, oh, cool. Okay. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. So, <laughs> so that's cool. I love, I love, and I love seeing his stuff. I don't get to watch it as much as I used to, um, but it's mm -hmm. just always amazing. And he's a great player too. Um, yeah. Fantastic. So what drew you to the, I used to have a set of sonars. I can't remember what model it was. I wish I still had them. Um, but uh, what, what drew you to that brand over like some of the other ones that are out there? I don't know, man. I, I had played, so I was playing a Gretsch kit before. It was one that I got. Uh, so all of my kits that I've ever had, except for this new one, is were used. I bought them used, and I, I love them. They're great. And I kind of wish I still had the Gretsch kit around for like a secondary kit, but I used that to then purchase my now uh, kit. The first kit I, I bought new, which is pretty cool um yeah. to me um i had played a few sonars in college um we had one in their like practice space um i don't even know what it is it was this weird looking blue sparkle kit with like black hoops don't know what it was but it was a sonar kit and i really enjoyed it and always sounded really good and the heads were beat like crazy like they're so bad and it still sounded good nice. and it wasn't even tuned or anything but it, it, it still sounded pretty good and then the kit that they use for their like chapel i played that too it was another sonar kit and it always sounded pretty good and i was like this might be something something to look into so nice. there was one in in uh our our music store here in canada it's called long and mcquaid um I had walked in because I was like, I want to buy a new kit. This is the time. I had a little bit of money laying around. And I walked in and I almost picked up a little tiny, like, Tama kit, like a little uh, club jam. Have you ever seen those? They're, like, super small. Yeah. Like, shallow drums, super small sizes and stuff. And it was, like, this cool turquoisey blue color. And I was like, I almost bought it because I was helping my dad with a with his church plant and we were in like a small room so i was like let's get a smaller drum kit so that we can you know fit but my dad kind of talked me out of it because it was maybe not as high end as i would want out of a brand gotcha. new kit that i was kind of picking up and i saw this this sonar kit and had this cool white um like i think it's like pearl like wrap and i just loved it i thought it looked really cool and i sat down and played it and i was like yeah, this sounds great. And it was just with the stock heads and stuff and like whoever kind of tuned it in the store. And I'm like, yeah, I think this is the kit. So I then took it home. I I could have, I, I originally wanted another Gretsch kit, but 
I would have ended up spending, I think, too much money on it. And it wasn't in the store and stuff. So, yeah, I decided on the on the sonar. And I don't think, yeah, I don't think I would have picked a different kit. I think that would have been a mistake if I picked a different kit. I mean, maybe in the future I'll get something else. But right now, I love it. It's so and, good. And it sounds, it does sound great. Like in your recordings, it sounds amazing. Yeah, the, thanks. First off, yeah, thanks. It's uh, I love trying to dial it in and keep keep it tuned nice and then mix nice. But yeah, put some different heads on it. And I just love the sound of it. Nice, nice. That's good. I know this kit, this Mapex, um, those are still like two years later, those are still the stock heads that it came with because they just okay, sound yeah. so everything sounds so good i don't mm-hmm. want to screw with that like <laughs> yeah you know what i mean like and uh you're like all right i'm gonna put some different heads on oh no i'm sure they would tune up just fine right but uh yeah but that's i mean i've just and of course if i'm you know if i was like playing hours hours every day they would have needed to be replaced mm-hmm. at this point but but they anyway, but yeah, so that's always cool to find a kit. And you're like, man, this sounds good. Just like this, just out of the box. Mm-hmm. Imagine what it'll sound like when I start tweaking with it and doing and doing stuff. So what does the future look like for you, Drew, in terms of YouTube specifically and drums in general? Are you playing out anywhere? What's going on? Yeah, um, I do play. I play with. I play for my church uh, at least once a month. Um, that's always good. Keeps me going. Um, I don't really play with anybody else. Like I have a bunch of friends that, that play music, but we always go, we should do something and then never do it. So, um, I think just for me, it's just keep on, keep on making videos and enjoying it. Uh, just keep learning how to mix drums. That's become one of my favorite parts is learning how to mix the audio so yeah i think i'm just just gonna keep going and see what see what happens i mean i I finally hit my goal my goal of reaching a thousand subscribers which is amazing nice congratulations Um, that's a big milestone yeah yeah Yeah, thank you um and the cool part was like when it finally flipped over to the thousand i hadn't I don't know when the last time I had made a video. So people were just seeing a lot of my old videos and enjoying yeah. them. And I felt bad because I'm going, there's all these new subscribers and I haven't posted a new video in months. So I'm back on it a little bit, still being a bit slow, but I think I just, yeah, keep on making, making videos and see what, see what comes of the social media thing. Nice. Yeah. Do you utilize social media pretty frequently? Facebook, Insta, all those things. I mean, I try to share it on like my uh, Facebook page. I'm not super active on it, so it's not been a big benefit to me. Really, it's just been post on YouTube and keep posting, share it, share it on Facebook if I can. And if I remember, um, I post a few things on Instagram every once in a while, like reels and stuff. Uh, I recycle what I do for like YouTube shorts and put it on. Yeah. On Instagram. So let's see what what happens. (laughs) Why make, why make content for different platforms when you can make one that's good for everything? Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Absolutely. I love it. It's cool too. How people have like continued finding like what, what you've done previously and been like, oh, I'm going to connect with this guy. This is really good yeah. stuff and that your channels continue to grow even in a, a space where you're not making as many videos or hadn't at the time. So that's pretty mm-hmm. cool. You know, yeah. People finding stuff. Yeah. I feel like that's a good sign. Cause yeah. like the stuff, like the backlog is at least still interesting and entertaining for people. So, and yeah. then hopefully the new stuff, is that much better. So Right. Well, and, and also like when I, I feel like it's always relevant. You know what I mean? Mm. So uh, you know, um, I'm trying to I'm trying to remember a specific one of the like you did you, you did one where you were talking about like symbol endorsements um a what ways back. Oh yeah. And, and talking about like mm-hmm. somebody like Sabian endorsing somebody that's like 
a Facebook or a YouTube drummer, like at the level that we're at, where, you know, we have a lot of subs for us, but in terms of like Quivis or, you know, Cooper drummer, it, you know, we're not there. So it, you, yeah. you got a really lots of practical information about, about that and kind of setting realistic expectations for yourself as a drummer. And so stuff like that mm-hmm. is always, um, is always applicable. Whether you, you know, whether mm-hmm. you posted it today or five years ago, that's still, it still holds up and is helpful today. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Um, yeah. So that's cool. That's cool. So I think people will keep ho- finding your I stuff ho- like that. Mm-hmm. And I hope to make those types of videos too, that like, even if I made it three years ago, it's, it's still helpful. It's a topic that is what the YouTube world calls is evergreen. It's always going to last, you know? Yes. So. I was actually looking for that word in my head while I rambled at evergreen. <laughs> and I was like, Oh, there it is. Drew had it this whole time. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. What, um, what advice would you give to somebody? We'll make this a two part thing, starting out on the drums and then starting out on YouTube. Yeah, I think starting on the, starting out on the drums. Um, The way I started was one, just enjoying it, doing what I love. So I just kind of learned most of my stuff just playing songs. So that's why it's translated so well to making YouTube videos is I just play my favorite songs. So um, yeah, when you're young, enjoy it. Um, Don't don't think you have to be the next like child prodigy uh, and be the best at like five or if you're starting at 13 and you like said, Oh, I missed the boat at, F- I should have been playing for five more years or six, seven more years before that. Uh, don't worry about it. Just enjoy it while you're young. And then you'll gradually start falling into some of this stuff. Cause you'll be hearing different drummers playing certain things and go, I want to learn how to do that. And then figure out your favorite songs. And then as you're getting a little, a little older, a little bit more, like progress more in your drumming start focusing on things like playing with a metronome because that's something i didn't focus on and it's been really helpful now playing with a metronome and keeping time because metronomes tell you whether you, the metronome keeps time you have to keep up to the metronome sometimes when you haven't played to it. And you learn that you're not as good at keeping time as you think you are when you're playing to this song. So play to a metronome as, as you're progressing. So play to a metronome and then also try working on some rudiments because rudiments are one of the easiest way to it. Like if you're stuck and go, I don't know what to learn. How am I going to progress and get better? There's all these patterns that so many great drummers have put together that I'm sure we haven't learned. Like I haven't learned. I've learned singles. I've learned doubles and I've learned paradiddles, maybe double paradiddles and flams. Like there's so many more patterns to go play um, and learn. So learn those things because they're going to keep your hands and your feet like loose and um they're gonna challenge you so they're more important than i thought they were when i was younger but i don't don't go crazy on them when you're when you're starting out so as you progress move into that kind of stuff so enjoy it first and then when you learn to enjoy it and you're having fun then put in that time and that effort into the technical stuff that's awesome that's awesome i love i remember i never really did play with the metronome for a long time. And then this one guy came to our church. Um, He was, that's what he did. He was, he was a worship leader. He toured around, played music. And um, he, he would start us off and he finally turned around and was like, do you not like my tempos? (laughs) I was like, Hmm. So I just talked to them (laughs) afterwards. I'm like, what can I do to be better? He's like, play with the, start learning to play with a metronome, you Mm -hmm. know? Because that way, even when it's not there, you get you get so accustomed to to staying where you started. You know, yeah. even if if somebody else is counting it in, 
um, that you don't push and pull as much. It, it's mm-hmm. much more consistent. But when you're not used to it, it's like it really makes what you're doing like stand out. Like, oh my gosh, I am not anywhere near staying on this tempo, you know. Um, exactly, so that's yeah. great. That's great advice. Great, and I love the it. Enjoy it. Still, just have fun playing, and then start working in some of these the the not learning things, but like some of the book work, you know, of it. Like this is a this is a parrot at all. This is a Radamacue that was pulled pulled from years ago. I don't even know what it is. I just know that it's in there. <laughs> but you know, like these are all these things, and you're like, oh, these help these do help me around the you know around the drum kit. There's some neat stuff I can do. Um, but I like that because mm-hmm. I think sometimes people will be like, here's your stick control book. This is all we're gonna do for a year. Then we'll look at the kit. And and most people are getting into it because they want to play the kit. So it's easy to get discouraged. Mm-hmm. So I think that's a yeah. good, yeah, have fun, have fun with it and work the other stuff in. Cause that's important too. You've got to have mm-hmm. that if you want to be a well-rounded drummer. So that's good advice. What about YouTube? If somebody was starting out on YouTube, uh, what advice would you give them about that? Um, advice for YouTube is um, lighting and lighting is more important than your camera. Uh, because your if you have good lighting, your camera will look better than you think it does. Because uh, if you use a phone, that'll work. But if you have a nice light and you make it, you light your subject well, yourself, your drums, then whatever camera you use will work perfectly fine. Um, audio is even more important than visual. So that's another the next thing. If you can get at least a, some sort of microphone to record with, uh, whether it be one that just attaches to your camera or you get an interface or you just have like a USB microphone to start, uh, that's way, way more important to uh, videos than the video aspect of it. Uh, if you can't... I don't know if you've ever, it, this might be uh, like a good example. Like we can hear each other very, very well, but like Zoom video quality might not be always the greatest, but people will sit and watch this because they can hear what we're saying and it, hear it well and not be worried about the the picture quality that is happening. Um, right. So people will be able to understand what you're either saying or you're playing Um, even if you can't see it very well. So the audio, especially with musicians, audio is so much more important. So invest in something for, for sound. Um, That's good. Yeah. So if you got a hundred bucks to spend, spend it on, on microphones, not on. Oh, for sure. Crazy camera stuff. Not that you can get crazy stuff for a hundred, but you can get something that'll be, that'll really get you started with having good audio. And um and the the lighting thing too lights you could get lights, cheap you know pretty cheap. Oh yeah, Amazon is a dream for that kind of stuff. Like you can find cheap stuff that works really well. Like most of my lighting stuff is from Amazon. Like Same. I've got this nice soft box here, and it's it's an Amazon light. You just do a little bit of research and figure it out a little bit, and then yeah, boom, find find what you need. That's awesome. That's awesome. Um, what do you have any recommendations for like what like what a good like if you just have a little bit of money to spend on a microphone? Is there one like specific one that you'd recommend, or would you say if you get two of them and put them over top? Oh yeah, if you can if you can get two microphones instead of one, that's your best bet. Um, I would say, um, yeah, the second, so I've, I've had two sets of like drum microphones. The set I started with, I would not recommend to anyone starting off because it was on the cheaper side, but it still worked. That's the thing. It still really worked. And so don't be discouraged if you have like the cheapest microphones, but like I would invest in like 
two nice, like decent overheads. So I use um, a couple of Shure microphones for my overheads. They are, they're on their budget side of their microphones, but they're still really, really good because they're made by a high quality company. Right. Um, let's just see if I can f- uh, find the name of them before when I'm recommending them, I'll recommend the correct one. <laughs> Let's see here. I don't even know what kind mine are anymore. I've had them for so uh, long. <laughs> so you're, you're yeah. at least just, you at least remember the brand. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So the, the Shure PGA 181 it's like an imitation of their the pga line in sure are essentially a a more budget conscious version of their like higher end line the beta line so all of the mics in that pga line i would actually really recommend on starting out because they are better than they're still affordable yeah they might be a little more expensive than somebody who's starting might want to spend on a microphone but they will last you so much longer than if you get that first like cheap ones um the sure pga 181 i would get two of those and use those as overheads uh they're two condenser mics and they work really really well so that's what i would do and if you can like As you progress, I would say like add another one from that line. Like they have the, they have a kick drum microphone. They've got Tom microphones, both condenser and dynamic Tom microphones. So you can pick from each of those and they do a great job. So that's what I would recommend. So look at the sheer PGA line for your first microphones. I'm actually going to make a video about this. So, Oh, nice. You're, you're getting it. You're getting it. You're getting a sneak peek. So that's awesome. That's cool. That'll be, that'll be a great video. Very informative. And I think it's people, it is easy to get caught up in what does the video itself look like versus the audio, you know, and we've, we've all seen it where like, Mm -hmm. Oh, well, that's a really nice looking image but phone audio oh, yeah. is not great. You know what I mean? Like um, you, you can get a better video with your phone than you can get a recording. Um, yeah. Any day of any day of the week. But, uh, and you know what? I think drummers have gotten so used to being okay with phone video and phone audio that they don't realize what, how much better it would be if they use the same video from their phone, but had, one microphone recording like youtube like um instagram like there's so much drum content on instagram of just people setting up their cell phone on like a music stand and stuff and we got so used to seeing that and that means it works like we can do it that way but if you want to actually invest in something audio will make it just that much better yeah 100 percent, 100 percent agree you, I had the first one that I ever did wasn't even, it was before the dramatic was even a thing. Um, mm-hmm. I was really doing it for my benefit as I was learning songs for a show. Um, but I just had a Zoom H4N or whatever. It's like a little recorder and it had the two XY mics on it. You could plug, you had two XLR inputs so you could plug like XLR mics into it. Um, but I just sat that in the room Mm -hmm. and even that, if you just, I had that lying around for media stuff. So like, even that was way better, you know, than just, and I would do that if I wanted to just kind of film myself playing a gig, I would probably just set that up because Mm -hmm. especially if it's just for me, like, cause that's going to get better audio. The, The phone doesn't know how to deal with all the volume in a, you know, in a, in a, especially with drums, they're so loud. Yeah. So, so, uh, uh, but yeah, man, that's, that's such good advice. And I think it's oft often neglected, um, Mm -hmm. uh, put, put your money into, into audio, the, and like you said, like, I don't think I'm looking in our studio. I don't think we've spent 
over the four years we've been doing this, well, almost four years, I don't think we've spent $150 on lighting. You know, like, wow, yeah. like I mean, mm-hmm. I, I think we replaced, we had some stuff and then we replaced some stuff. That might mm-hmm. be a, a high amount because like there's, we just added some more recently. But anyway, but like that over time, right? We just had two panel lights in here, like two LED panels. And that's what we that's what we used. Yeah. All you need is some light and your camera will look better, like you said. So this is such such good advice, man. Exactly. You know, it's the funny thing is about lighting. I started I started with one panel light, one, and a a like a desk lamp you know those lamps that like connect to the desk like it's clamps on and it like bends out and stuff i just had i just got a nice like led bulb instead of like a like a halogen bulb put it in there and i covered it with like a a white plastic bag and used that as one of my lights and it worked out so well and that was one of the lights that i used from the very beginning like you don't need anything crazy for that like you can really get away with whatever you got lying around so that's awesome. That's good. Yeah. So get creative. Now, don't, if you're going to put a b- bag over your light, definitely use an LED bulb. <laughs> exactly. Don't, don't use one that generates heat. <laughs> exactly. Because you're going to melt that bag. <laughs> <laughs> You'll have a mess in the middle of your recording. What is that yeah. smell? Why is my roof on fire? Right. Yeah. It'll yes. be bad. <laughs> yes. It'll be bad. Is, what, is there anything else you'd like to... Uh, to, to invest into those that are, are listening and watching today? Um, trying to think here. Um, That's a pretty big question, like a pretty broad yeah, question. Yeah, big question. Um, enjoy what you're doing while you're making videos. So that's, that's really important. And I think that's kind of goes without saying, but I might as well say it anyways. <laughs> And then like, um, figure out what you want, what you want this YouTube thing to look like, because if you don't feel like you need to get stuck in the same thing that everybody else is doing. So some of the things that that I, I've been working on when it comes to YouTube is like the combo of like, how do I get views and subscribers, but also how do I do something that's like different from everybody else? It's like a lot of times when you get on yeah. on YouTube and you're in the drumming space of YouTube, you you kind of have you have drum covers, you've got drum lessons, and then you got a little bit of like drum DIY. But there's there's so many other things you could do that hasn't really been touched. And if you come up with that good idea, go for it. You might not get a lot of attention right away, but gradually people will see it. And people will yeah. become more interested in it because it's it's different from what everybody else is doing. And like, yeah, if you want to keep doing drum covers as well, that's great because that'll help too, and you'll enjoy it and whatnot. But be creative. Don't 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 feel like you have to do what every other YouTube drummer has done. Yeah. In fact, don't. Right. <laughs> because- yeah. <laughs> Because like there's 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 a Drew Harper already, there's an Eric Henninger already. What mm-hmm. we need is what your personality brings to, to the mix, your creativity. Because we're gonna exactly. enjoy that. We're gonna learn from that. And mm-hmm. uh, and and yeah, so I love that. Find find a unique way to do it. What is give what you're doing, even if the content is similar, how is yours different? Like find that unique voice that's that's yours. Um, you did a video. This this popped into my head while you were talking. Um, I can't remember the drummer, but it you it, it was he was either a big YouTube drummer or like a, a session player or something, and you like challenged him to a to like a drum off on your YouTube channel, and then used kind of that as a platform to be like, hey, he still hasn't agreed, and it kind of became this talking point. That was so creative. I've never seen anybody else do that. That was so fun. Yeah. Yeah, I saw it. So it's uh, the guy I made, I challenged to a drum off was uh, Peter McKinnon. He's uh, he's not a YouTube drummer. He's a, a YouTuber who makes like 
really high end video. So he loves making really good videos um, about photography, videography and stuff. And one of his videos at the time, he just, he made a drum video. And I was like, he, at the time I was still in Ontario and he's from like Toronto, Ontario, which is about two hours away from where I was. And I'm going, there can only be one in our area playing drums on YouTube. And you just happen to have a huge platform, but I'm going to challenge you. So uh, the hope was to see if he would reach out and actually make a video, but it was just kind of fun to do it anyways. So I actually yeah. used a song that he usually uses in some of his videos and I played drums to it to like nice. kind of like cross over and stuff. So still haven't heard anything from him, but one day maybe uh, who knows. Peter McKinnon, if you're watching, there's this outstanding challenge. You can't let that go. Yeah. Unanswered. <laughs> Well, that, currently that, I'm winning. Yeah, that's that's right. If he's going to forfeit, you automatically win. Well, that goes to the that that idea though goes to the same point that you were talking about of um, finding unique things to do that are unique, you know, uniquely yours. And even when I set mm-hmm. out to do like I had wanted to do interview stuff for a long time on the channel, and then other people were had started doing it and they were doing it well, you know. Mm-hmm. And so then it became a question of. Not can I do interviews, but like how how do I do it in such a way that it's it doesn't it's not just white noise, you know, it's not just what this guy or gal is doing over here. It it has a unique voice to it and and uh that's challenging, I think. I think, but it's mm-hmm. it's worth trying to come up with a way to approach something that is, at least isn't readily done because it does make you stand mm-hmm. out a bit. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Well, man, this this is this is just everything has just been wonderful. Like great advice. Always, always good to get to know a little bit more about um the person. And um if if you guys haven't already, I'm gonna put links in the description and I'll pin a comment and all that good stuff with Drew's information. I'll put his Facebook page and his YouTube page, of course. Um, you guys go show him some love, check out some of his content. You will, you will be entertained. You will learn something. He's a great guy. He's got a great sense of humor. He's a great drummer. You'll be glad you did. And I'm super excited that we got to do this today, Drew. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. Yeah, thank you. I'm so glad that we finally got to do something together. So hopefully we get to do another thing in the future soon. Yes. Well, let's, you heard it here first, <laughs> everybody. So, so yeah, look, look there's got to be something else. <laughs> Again, let's look at doing something. We, we can talk about what that looks like, but let's do something in the new year. Yeah, for sure. Let's do it. Awesome. Awesome. All right, you guys, thank you for stopping by and hanging out with me and Drew. We will see you next time.